When I first met Ian Little, he said, I looked all over New Zealand for a place that would take my trolley buses, my wife's doll collection, my radio station, and me. Foxton was that place. Sunday Magazine. up we've got today in this Sunday's magazine. We're going to open our program today with a talk to a most interesting chap. And we open our program today with a talk to Angus McIntyre. Now, Angus McIntyre is a trolley bus driver in Vancouver. That's interesting, isn't it? Angus, it's nice to see you come and see us here in New Zealand. Well, it's a, certainly a pleasure to be here. Good. Tell me, Angus, what differences do you find in our trolley bus systems in New Zealand? There's only really two. There's our own in Christ and uh, Wellington that operate as over yours in Vancouver? Well, the first thing noticeably is that you're on the left side of the road. And uh, uh, very few places in the world are in that situation. Uh, Vancouver is on the right side of the road, as is North America, but British Columbia traffic was on the left side of the road till 1922. I remember climbing off a, an Air New Zealand flight in San Francisco, and I went charging out the front of the airport, and I went to cross the road. My wife grabbed my coattail and said, Get back here, you'll get killed, you fool. They're coming the other way here. And I thought, well, these Americans always did things wrongly, because there's only one way to have it, and that's drive on the left side of any roadway in, in the world would be correct. Would that be right, do you think? Well, I've visited here over the years, and we lived in Australia for five years when I was younger, and... And so returning each time, it feels less and less foreign to me to be on the left side of the road, just to sort of switch back and forth without thinking about it too much. Yeah. You've got, you're the uh, lucky sort of a chap. You're not married. You're able to roam, and roam around the country, roam around the world. What countries have you been into? Mostly it's been return trips to the United States, Australia, New Zealand. But last year I was on a trip to Poland, the Slovak Republic, and Vienna, which was quite an insight to both tram and trolley bus systems in the former communist countries in the East Bloc. Would you say they are highly organized on the side of electric propulsion? Uh, they're very, very uh, pro-electric, mainly because of a, a lack of fuel supplies, so that they, uh, they can generate electricity through coal fairly cheaply and uh, provide power for trams, trains, trolley buses rather than uh, fuel for motor buses, which is, is dear. Okay, now let's take it the next stage further. Do you think there'll be a real a resurgence of electric propulsion in the English-speaking countries, or do you think it'll be still going the way of the bus? I, I think, generally speaking, it will continue as it is for some time. There's some radical changes that might be on the horizon, uh, but usually those changes take much longer to appear in reality than they do in, in the predictions that the, the experts make. All right. So in New Zealand, we've got a predominant bus system. We went from we went from the electric train, which is basically still there. We went from the electric tram, which is not there, with the exception of Christchurch. We've gone to trolley bus, and they've gone, except in Wellington and here in Foxton as a museum. Do you think another trolley bus system will ever crop up? What do you think? It's not too likely one might crop up in New Zealand simply because the, the infrastructure is expensive to install. If it's already there, it's not an expensive thing to put in to convert from tramway, say, to trolley bus. But if you rip the whole thing out, it's quite an expensive proposition to put back in again. Why do you think that the councils ripped out the trolley bus in the first place? Usually a one-way street grid would appear in the center of a city, and the, the council would say, oh, we can't 
spend the money on putting up all this new wire. So we're going to, we're just going to chuck the whole thing and put in motor buses. And do you think that's a sign of good stable government or not? Uh, not really. I think that uh, if you have big support from the public, and they, they, for example, Dunedin had quite an extensive trolley bus system, and very hilly city, I think they were well suited for, for a place like Dunedin. And uh, if there's support for it, and then the city decides to take them out anyway, well, it, you don't get much uh, following from your ridership. In fact, most cities that converted from trolley bus to motor bus have lost a lot of riders. All right, that's right. Now, in Dunedin, you had another system. You had trolley bus, you had electric tram, you had a cable car. Have you ever been in another country that had an extensive cable car system? The, the only cable car system I've been on is uh, in San Francisco. You've been on that? Yes. Have you driven it? No, no, no. Is it a special license to drive it? That there's only one place in the world you are licensed to be a gripman, and that is in San Francisco. I have a gripman's license in New Zealand. Did you know that? I had no idea. I've got it up right up there where you were in the transmitter room before. It was on the wall, a great big printed unit saying that I'm a, an official licensed gripman in New Zealand. And you have actually done that? I have actually done that. Driven cable cars in Dunedin and cable cars in Wellington. So I've had a wee go at everything because I might not be li living all that long because St. Peter might call me up. And if he does, he wants me to take two trolley buses to heaven with me. Well, I'd say that you're in a, a, a very small minority of people in the world who have ever operated cable car things. In New Zealand, I operated an electric tram at Queen Elizabeth Park. I drove a trolley bus in Wellington. I hopped on a plane. I flew to Melbourne. I knew the tram driver in Melbourne. He gave me his tram to take back to the depot up there. So the net result of that was I drove in two countries electric traction in the same 12-hour brief. Can you beat that? Uh, no, I, I can come close, but uh, <laughs> not quite top that one. It, it's a it's an interesting network of people that develops that have this interest in in electric transport in particular. And you can go to almost any country. We when we were in Poland through a contact in Vancouver, we were able to charter a tram in the Katowice area, a little single trucker for six hours, tour all through the system, which is a massive operation, at the cost of fifteen dollars per person, which is a, a real bargain. I should imagine that would be. And did you find they were very communist in their outlook, or, or not? E even though the, the governments there have changed away from a, a pure communist form of government, it's still very, very much uh, in effect. You feel it when you're there. That there's, that there's remnants of it all over the place. Do you think you feel that the common form might be following you down the road? Not quite, but uh, there, there, it's a captive market for public transport, because very few people have cars. So. Uh, the system ran efficiently and it ran well. But the, I was quite impressed with the the operations of the tramway and trolley bus and bus systems there. Very good. And you're travelling from here back to Vancouver, are you via where, Australia? Uh, no, I've been in Australia for three and a half weeks and then I'll be uh, stopping off to see a, a high school a chum from school in Australia days in Auckland and then back to Vancouver next week. All the very best to you, Angus. Angus McIntyre, all the way from Vancouver. Thank you for contributing your little bit to Sunday Magazine. Thank you, and I'll certainly look forward to a return visit. You are tuned to the network, Radio Network, Radio Foxton and Radio Himatangi. The time is now 21 minutes past 5 o'clock. I'm doing this particularly so as Angus can get this recorded when he goes home. He'll hear this recording, and it certainly will remind him of a very, very pleasurable, lovely trip he had down under here to New Zealand. Thank you very much indeed, Angus, for coming and sharing your interest, your hobby, with us right here in Foxton.